Last week, Google announced that their AI product, Google Bard, is now known as Gemini. They also announced the release of Gemini Advanced, a paid product that is supposed to compete with ChatGPT Pro. I asked my subscribers if they'd like me to test Gemini Advanced, and the result was a resounding yes. So that's what we're going to do today. Welcome to Bite Size Booksmith, where technology empowers creativity. I'm Angie, and on this channel, we explore how emerging technologies and AI can enhance our craft and lives as writers. Special thanks to Sydney James XBL, who was the first to comment on that post, and who got to choose the genre for today, mystery. And if you don't like the mystery genre, you, now you know who to blame. Okay, so here we are now on gemini.google.com. This website should look rather familiar if you're used to using ChatGPT. Uh, it definitely has a very similar feel to it. Before we get started, I wanted to point out this section here. And this, I'm not sure if this is for Gemini or for Gemini Advanced. Uh, I don't know if it will apply when we're doing Gemini Advanced, but it does say that our conversations are being reviewed by humans to improve the technologies powering Gemini apps and don't enter anything that you don't want to be used or used. So let's make sure that we're not putting story ideas and stuff that we are truly going to use if this is the case with Gemini Advanced. I'm going to be using something we make up together, so that's not going to be a problem for me, but just keep that in mind. Okay, got Gemini, Gemini Advanced, which I will sign up for here in a moment. Enter our prompt down here. We can also enter an image. We can use our microphone to connect and do a uh, voice to text. We can make the bar over here smaller and wider. Uh, we can, once we have a chat going, we can end, you know create a new chat. We'll probably have a list of our chats over here as well. We've got help, see our activity, as well as settings. I am gonna come over here and hit the upgrade to Gemini advanced button. It's gonna open us a new window. So you basically get two months for free to try. And then it is $19.99 per month after that point. I'm in the US. And I also, I'm not sure if they're going to charge me sales tax or not. So I'm in Ohio and I get taxed on everything. I also included in the Google One subscription, two terabytes of storage. Uh, available soon, Gemini and Gmail, Docs and more. How Bard used to be uh, available in our Gmail and our Google Docs. I guess it's not available just yet. So that's a, eh, not really excited about that. I've also heard from other content creators that it's not available in the Google workspace yet either. So that's a bummer. I, this is my personal account. So I'm not even trying uh, to use a Google workspace. I'm going to stop the video here for a second and go ahead and do my upgrade. And then I will be right back. Okay, I have just finished upgrading, and yes, it did charge me tax. It will charge me tax whenever my two months are over. So I'm going to come up here, go to Gemini Advanced, and let's take a look around. Oh, and it's black. Hello, Angie, how can I help you? Awesome. So it looks like we can create a fantastical image. It can help me write HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. We can role play as an event planner. Oh, that sounds exciting. And it can also inspire me from an image. So maybe we can try that another time. However, I do see this, that the conversations are processed by human reviewers to improve the technologies. Yeah, that's a big X for me on using this for stuff that I'm going to publish. So maybe I'll come back by later and see how it works. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss it. And let's get started. First thing I want to do is I want to ask Gemini some questions just to establish what it knows about writing, what it knows about writing novels, and what it knows about story structure. So uh, I'm interested in writing a mystery short story. Is that something you can help? me with. Okay. And let's see what it says. Absolutely. I'd love to help you craft a compelling mystery short story. And here's how we can start. So brainstorming, and it gives me some questions to answer here or some things to think about. Setting the detective. 
under outlining and plotting, let's map out your story. So it's got the hook, clues, red herring, suspects, building tension, the big reveal. And then also gives you some tips for success. So pacing, subtlety, atmosphere. And then it asks you some questions. So what specific crime or scenario did you have in mind? That's awesome. And we can upvote it, downvote it. It looks like we can modify the response. Shorter, longer, simpler, more casual, more professional. I'm actually really happy with how it is. Looks like we could share an export. So maybe what I will do is once I'm done with this, the chat we're going to do, I will see if I can provide it to you guys so you can access it. I'm not going to use anything that's super important to me or anything. So I definitely not worried about that. So double check response. What's that do? Oh, searching on Google. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, check completed, no results found. Okay. And you can also copy or report a legal issue. Okay. Oh, okay. And it gave you some related search topics as well. So you can click this and more than likely launch Google and uh, search the topic. That's awesome. Okay. So I actually want to move on. I'm not going to continue this train of thought with it. I want to know actually it answered my next question. I was going to ask it, what would I need to do to write this story? But it looks like it, it already gave me the next steps. I'm going to ask it, are you familiar with the Lester Dent formula? Yes. Also referred to as dense master plot formula. That's correct. Okay. So it's for classic pulp fiction stories around 6,000 words. That's correct. Lester Dent, huh? Basic structure. So four 1500 word sections. Also correct. Okay. How can I use it? Modern variation, not one size fits all. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. Would you like to try brainstorming a short story idea using the Lester Dent formula as a guide? That's really cool. It uh, went to that next step. I also want to ask it, are you familiar uh, with the Save the Cat Beat Sheet? Okay, so it tells you a little bit about it. it. Talks about the fifteen story beats. Okay, and then it's going to give you a small idea of what the fifteen beats are. Is it for mysteries? The Save the Cat beat sheet works well for mysteries. So it's going back to what we talked about ahead of time, earlier in this conversation, and it's making it relevant. So that's interesting. And if you weren't aware, I had to go look this up. It was really hard to find, but I found that the context window for all of the Geminis is 32K. So that's about the same as the chat GPT-4 32K that we had before. So it's not as long as the chat GPT Turbo, chat, or excuse me, chat GPT-4 Turbo. And it's also not as long as our Claude 2.0. 2.1, you can't use to write fiction or write prose. It just doesn't like it. Okay. So these are the kind of, these are the things that I wanted to ask it to see. What does it know about story writing? So I'm pretty happy with this. So let's go ahead and create a new chat. One thing real here, I'm going to come and I can actually rename the chat. So that's cool. But yeah, let's go up here and hit new chat. Oh, and it looks like it's going to tell you this thing about the human re reviewers every time. So that's interesting. Okay. So now we are going to go through and we are going to try to come up with a story idea. And I actually, beforehand, I, I came up with all of the prompts. So otherwise me sitting here and typing them out is going to be really long. So 
let's get started. So please give me five ideas for a private investigator mystery based on the following situation. So we've got a female PI with psychic abilities that she hides from others. And the PI is being stalked by a supernatural threat. I really wanted to put vampires in here, but I was really holding myself back. You're welcome. Let's go ahead and submit this. Okay, so we've got a couple ideas here. Got one, two, three, four, and five. So the haunted heirloom PI is hired to investigate a wealthy family plagued by misfortune. An old, seemingly cursed piece of jewelry seems to be connected to the incidents. And then we've got the PI's, oh, it's got actually put a twist in here. The PI's psychic senses start alerting her to a male malevolent force attached to the object. One that begins focusing its attention on her. Is it merely connected to the object or is the PI the true target? Interesting. Okay, so we've got visions of violence. The PI experiences disturbing visions of a, grease, a grisly murder about to take place. And there are no obvious clues, only fragments of imagery and fleeting psychic impressions. And the twist is that the PI digs deeper and realizes the visions are connected to her own stalker. The entity is somehow trying to manip manipulate future events, feeding on fear and horror it can generate. That sounds really complicated. I'm not interested. Okay. So the shadow client, I'm actually going to pause this. I'm going to pick one and I will be right back. Okay. And if you thought you were getting out of having a vampire, I'm sorry to bring it to you. I really didn't like any of the five that it gave me. So I said, I'm not really thrilled with any of these ideas. Let's have the PI investigate a missing heiress. The clues point to a vampire noble, but they were planted. And an old foe of the vampire noble is the one pulling the strings. It's thrilled. It's telling me how amazing I am. And I know, obviously. So let's build on this foundation. And so it gives us some motives, potential motives for the stalker. It's giving us some more information about the how the psychic abilities of the PI fit in, and as well as some challenges for the PI and some additional twists. Let me know how you want to re further refine the plot, and it's going to add in some specific details of the missing heiress and create a backstory for the vampire noble and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to take a couple minutes and add a little bit more here, and then we'll move on. Okay, so I went ahead and added that the motive for the stalker is a power play. And once the PI get invol it gets involved, the foe is going to try to play with her to get her to give up the case. As well, the PI has a power of psychometry and is able to get psychic impressions from touching things. And the impressions she gets from the scene of the abduction don't match the clues. As well as, let's see, let's have the PI and the Vampire Noble form an uneasy alliance and he discovers the truth about her abilities. So let's go ahead and see what that does. Okay. Ooh, that, that adds an, a fantastic layer of tension. Okay, so it's going to continue to flesh it out more and more how it wants to. I want to take control back from this, and I want to do it my way. So let me go ahead and grab my next prompt from the idea above. Please draft a story premise that includes the following key elements, protagonist, antagonist, the core conflict between them, and the stakes at play. Let's see what it does. Okay, so we've got Sarah Blackwood, a private investigator with a hidden gift of psychometry. And we've got a antagonist, Victor Laszlo, an ancient and cunning supernatural being of unknown origin. Okay. So not knowing what he is, that's a problem. And 
let's see, court conflict. Sarah is hired to find a missing heiress, only to find evidence that implicates a reclusive vampire noble. Soon she realizes the clues were double- deliberately planted. How- Meanwhile, the true culprit, Victor Laszlo, sees Sarah's investigation as a game, and using his influence, he manipulates events to toy with her and push her towards abandoning the case. And then we've got stakes. The stakes for Sarah, the stakes for the vampire noble, as well as for the antagonist. So I'm really liking how this is coming together. Okay, so really quick, what kind of supernatural is Victor? Uh, Also, what is the name? The vampire noble. Because I don't like talking about people. I don't know their name. Okay, so it gave me some options. And it also gave me some options for the vampire noble name here. Just for... Quick. Let's make Victor. I can't spell. A demonic entity. And for the vampire noble, let's call him Alexander. There we go. Okay. And now it wants you to get more specific, which is awesome. Let's go and so please write a description. Helps when one can spell of Sarah. Victor. I should have picked a a name that was easier to spell. And Alexander, Alexandre. I'm sure one of you will let me know how to do it. Okay, so please write a description of Sarah Victor and Alexander. And I actually want to, including uh, details of their backstory. And how it affects their actions throughout the story. Okay. Okay, so we got an appearance. Backstory and driving force behind all of our characters. Normally, if I was writing this, I would do a lot more work on it, but we are already running pretty long. So let's go here. Okay, so now let's go ahead. And please turn the above premise into a novel outline using the Save the Cat structure adapted for a mystery novel. And let's see what it does. Okay, so we've got... Okay, opening image, theme stated, setup, introducing the mystery, catalyst, debate, breaking into two, building tension, B story, fun and games in the midpoint. We've got escalation, so the bad guys move in. All is lost, dark night of the soul. I've got in the resolution, dig deep drive. It's interesting. Breaking to three, finale, and the final image. Okay. These are very. What's the word I want to use? Short. Oh, 
but they look to be pretty consistent. So they they look to be at least maybe two sentences for each one. Uh, typically with chat, I find that as it gets further along, the what you have for, say, Act 1 is pretty meaty. And then by the time you get to Act 5, it's very anemic what it's providing you. So again, if I had time, we would go through and we could add in some subplots. We could add in some additional characters, but we're not going to do that. We are going to turn it into chapters now. I typically write in scenes, but for for this, we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to go down to chapters and see how it handles chapters. So my novel needs to be at least 30 chapters. Please turn this outline into a chapter list covering all 15 story beats. And a story beat can be split into two or more chapters, if appropriate. And each supporting character should have at least five chapters from their POV. It's actually, the math is not right. So I don't actually want to have multiple POV. This was actually initially written for a romance. Here we go. Okay, chapter one. The missing dog case establishes Sarah's routine and her strained relationship with her clients. So that's where she's starting. So she's starting uh, a previous case to the one with the heiress is going to be something to, uh, to do with a missing dog. And then we've got chapters two and three are going to be theme stated and set up. Sarah interacts with her world. Debate over taking the heiress case builds with underlying themes of trust and unseen truths revealed. I'm curious what this trust is based on and what unseen truths. And again, if we had a lot of time, we would figure out what they are. So we're going to do. I find it interesting that it's talked about debating over taking the heiress case. Before actually meeting the wealthy patron introduces the missing heiress mystery. So I'm wondering how that's happening before this is going on. So maybe she's trying to decide if she wants to meet with the person to learn more about the case. And then she, despite her misgivings, she accepts the case. Yeah, there's, this isn't great, but it's not terrible either. I think if I would have given it quite a bit more information, I think it would have been better. Okay, so let's do this. Let's write a draft of chapter one opening image. And I probably need to be really specific about this. Let's say it's from Sarah's point of view. And first person, past tense. I actually think that most mysteries are written in third person. Don't quote me on that. I don't read very much adult mysteries. Okay. Let's see what it does. Okay, so we've got the poodle. Gigi was more of a fashion statement than a dog. I love that opening line. That's fantastic. Her hair was dyed cotton candy pink and the a rhinestone collar worth more than my rent dug into her plump neck. Mrs. Everglade wailed with perfectly manicured hands clutching her chest. She's gone, absolutely vanished. Okay. The word struck a nerve. It wasn't Gigi's fault that she got pampered instead of loved. Interesting. Let's see how long this is. Got a little bit of, of dialogue here. Word counter plus. Only 310 words. So this is 100% not 
going to work as a chapter. It's definitely, we would have to go from a uh, chapter description down to individual beats. So let's do this. I wonder, oh, actually, here we go. Let's come back up here and edit this. Okay. Please give me 10 chapter beats for chapter one. This chapter will be from Sarah's point of view, first person, past tense, and should only include action beats. Let's see if it understands what action beats are. It might not because chat thinks action beats are something different, but let's see what it does. Okay, so reading through these beats, I'm super confused. So we go from having something to do with a dog to tailing, Sarah is tailing a cheating spouse. But then we've got this missing dog. Altercation on the case, the client is dismissive, refuses to pay, Sarah is angry. Here we go. Something Now we've got something about an unfamiliar dog breed. This is... I'm really super confused. So why why is there a, a dog di disappearance if she's on a case for a cheating spouse? That doesn't make any sense. A little bit of a fail here for me on this, unless it just doesn't understand what action beats are. Let me try one more time. Let me get rid of this action beats thing and see if that fixes the problem. And it could also just be, I haven't given it enough information for it to know what the heck I'm talking about. Okay, so in media res, start in mid-action, which is fantastic. Sarah could be tailing the suspicious boyfriend in the missing dog case. Okay, so we've got our missing dog case back. So we've got some first-person narration, talking to herself. Routine job. She's got a flash inner conflict. Okay. So this is a bit closer to what I was looking for. So let's just try to write a draft of beat one. Now we're not including a writing style. So it, 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 we're going to get what we get. Please write a draft of Chapter one, beat again. This is from Sarah's point of view. Okay. The chihuahua yipped from Mr. Benson's oversized designer handbag, nails scrabbling against patent leather. He hadn't even let me finish talking. Are you sure you're qualified, he whined, eyes darting from his jittery dog to me. The suspicious suspicion stung, even if I couldn't blame him. I crouched lower, ignoring the ache in my knees and the way my jeans scraped against the damp sidewalk. Princess appreciates routine, I told him. Or I told the trembling ball of fur. But she broke out at her usual walk time. Okay. Uh, 
I wonder. Let's see. Great. And make sure you are always saying please and letting the LLM know that it's doing a great job because when they take over, you have a possibly get out of death free card. Okay, so great. Let's continue. Narrate the pros. Let's use narrative with B2. Do I honestly think this is going to work for writing an entire story? Absolutely not. Okay. Okay, so it did continue. It did continue from where we were. Interesting. With the beat from B1, it continued to B2, which is awesome. We're getting about, let's see here. Counter plus 229. And as I said, do I think that Gemini Advanced is ready for pros? Uh, I don't think quite yet. Just from what we've seen here, I haven't done any in-depth testing. I, I literally signed up right on the video today. I would need to do quite a bit more in-depth testing to see, but I definitely think that ChatGPT sticks closer to the linear thought than this kind of just went off on a tangent or we've got some weird stuff happening here. If you guys do give Gemini Advance a try, let me know what you think. Coming back to this new chat thing and having it say that don't enter anything you don't want reviewed or used. Yeah, I'm not down with that. As far as writing prose, for me, it's going to be a pass. But like I said, I, I'd like to hear what you guys think. Get in there, play with it if you want to, or you might save yourself $20 and just stick with whatever you're currently using. I'm going to end it here. This video has gone on forever. My apologies, but I did want to give it a good test here. You guys have an amazing day and uh, we'll talk to you later.